All right. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Martin Engelman, and I'm with the Contra Costa Transportation Authority. I'm the Deputy Executive Director for Planning, and uh, delighted to be here this morning and uh, tell you a little bit about our organization, the Contra Costa Transportation Authority, and also uh, some projects we're working on that uh, are on the fringes of your uh, purview. Uh, the uh, Transportation Authority uh, is a half-cent sales tax agency and we deal uh, with Contra Costa, the county of Contra Costa. We are not the county. We're a separate agency. Contra Costa has over a million residents, um, 19 incorporated cities and towns, 3,200 miles of roadway, and five transit providers. The uh, agency was established in 1988. We have 20 employees. Um, and um, we have a number of standing committees, advisory committees, technical committees, probably a similar structure to what you have here. And uh, a few years back, our new executive director was appointed, and he was the uh, uh, former Caltrans director, Randy Iwasaki. Mm -hmm. He is our executive director, uh, four years running now. The, uh, the authority works by identifying uh, five planning areas in our county. Uh, we divide them into West County, Central County, East County, um, La Mirinda, and uh, the uh, uh, Danville, San Ramon area of SWAT. And basically everything we do uh, in the county is based upon, it's from the ground, ground up. Our cities uh, work with us to develop our plans, and they are developed then at the sub-regional level. And then we bring them together, all of these sub-regions come together, and we create uh, one countywide transportation plan, which looks out to 30 years into the future and uh, identifies all of the projects and programs, not only the projects and programs that we can fund through our half-cent sales tax, but also those uh, that are going to come through other funding sources. Uh, transportation Authority administers a half-cent sales tax. Uh, we began in 1989 with a 20-year half-cent sales tax that uh, garnered a, mil a billion dollars. Measure J was passed by the voters of Contra Costa in 2009. That's a 25-year tax. Um, uh, it was passed by the voters in 2004, and it began in 2009. And that brings in uh, $2 billion. So in aggregate, uh, the authority has overseen $3 billion in revenues for transportation. And we also actively manage state highway uh, and uh, transit programs. We also have the role of congestion management agency. Congestion management agencies, if you're familiar with that, that's a state mandated requirement that we uh, designate a, a network of uh, freeways and state highways and monitor levels of service on that and work with Caltrans, MTC, and the other congestion management agencies around the Bay Region to identify priorities uh, for state and federal funding and for the uh, Metropolitan Transportation Commission's regional transportation plan. The uh, Measure J sales tax uh, is split pretty much 40% uh, to capital improvement projects and 60% to various programs. Our biggest project most recently is completion of the fourth bore on the Caldecott Tunnel. I don't know how many of you have traversed Highway 24, but we now have four bores, and they've stopped switching the lanes. That was a $430 million project that we completed. Um, and uh, we've, uh, we're working on the widening of Highway 4 East, uh, from Pittsburgh east to Antioch and all the way up to 160. Uh, that's going from two lanes each way to four lanes each way with an HOV lane and transit in the median. We're putting uh, BART in the median. And uh, then we've done a number of uh, projects on I-80 and I-680. We also have 60% of our uh, uh, funds dedicated to programs, uh, local street maintenance and improvement programs, uh, funding for bus, BART, commute alternatives, transportation for livable communities and bike trails, as well as uh, congestion management and transportation planning. We are one of 19 self-help counties uh, in California. Uh, Measure C and Measure J have delivered a number of projects, um, and I'll, I'll uh, skip past these. I want to tell you also that we work in the ferry business a little bit. We're concentrating on 
uh, developing ferry service for West County and funding that. We've just recently <coughs> completed a study of ferry service that would serve uh, not only the city of Richmond, but also the city of Hercules and further east to Martinez. And we're even looking at a possibility of ferry, ferry service all the way up to, to Antioch. Uh, we, uh, we like to, to innovate, and uh, our executive director, Randy Yosaki, is very interested in innovation. So uh, we're um, working on a number of projects in mobile technologies, connected vehicles, um, and we're uh, offering up our county as a test bed for autonomous vehicles. Um, it won't be too long before uh, the cars will be able to at least uh, maneuver and drive by themselves without us driving them for at least part of the time of our trip. And we're also working on a real-time ride-sharing pilot program. You've probably heard a lot about the controversy of Uber and Lyft and Sidecar and so forth. Uh, we're working on a real-time ride-sharing pilot program uh, that is truly carpooling where just anyone who's driving somewhere picks up a passenger and the uh, reimbursement uh, from passenger to driver is limited to the cost of operating the vehicle. So we're avoiding some of the issues that uh, Uber and Lyft have run into, as you've probably recently heard about at the PUC. Uh, so so one, of the, one of the big uh, projects we're working on now, which I, I really want to spend a little bit of time talking about, it's uh, the TriLink study, State Route 239. And uh, this, this project is really, it's, it's on the western fringe of the uh, uh, Delta and Sassoon Marsh secondary zone. So it skirts along uh, to the west of, of uh, but it also in, in incurs upon some of the areas that you really, uh, that is, are in your purview. Um, and this study was uh, funded by um, uh, a grant uh, many years ago, a $15 million grant uh, that came through uh, federal funding um, and uh, was uh, initiated by Congressman Pombo. So we've, uh, we've spent five million of that 15 doing a feasibility study and that feasibility study was just released. Um, it's available at the uh, trilink239.org website and uh, you can read about all the details. Uh, but the study itself looks at creating uh, a new connection between Tracy and Brentwood. And uh, uh, on this slide here, you can see uh, the, the various components that we're looking at. There's a north link, uh, an airport connector link that would connect uh, past the Byron Airport, connecting uh, J4 and Vasco Road. There's a 580 link, which is a freeway link, and when you're traveling north on Highway 5 coming back from uh, Southern California and you want to get into the Bay Area, usually you take 580 west and start heading 580 west into uh, the Bay Area and over the Altamont Pass. Well, this 580 link would be a shot straight north and it would connect up to um, the Route 4 bypass and connect to Brentwood and uh, onward to into Contra Costa County. The South Link is along existing Byron Highway. So um, it's been an interesting challenge trying to weave this project uh, through um, all of the uh, environmental concerns and limitations and constraints that we have uh, along this corridor, and I'll just go through them very quickly here. We have uh, the, the corridor con considerations are planned development, prime farmland, land acquired for conservation, alkaloid soils, which uh, house some very uh, rare plant species, vernal pools. There's uh, existing infrastructure such as the wind farms and utilities, wind resource areas, the uh, delta protection zone and waterways, and last but not least, the Byron Hot Springs. Uh, so we've been working uh, with uh, a number of organizations trying to figure out the alignment for this project, and we've come up with uh, a few alignments here, and the feasibility study settles on the alignments that are shown here, an, an airport connector, uh, the north link, uh, which would connect uh, from the airport to the north, the south link along uh, J4, which is an improvement of Byron Highway, improving it from two lanes to four lanes, and the I-580 link, 
that's the freeway portion, and we're looking at possible tolling on that road. There's also a transit component to this. We have uh, eBART coming all the way out to Antioch, and we hope eventually to extend it beyond 160 to the south into Brentwood. And if we did that, we could actually have a transit link that connected from eBART down to Tracy, and that would help us to um, essentially circle the bay since that would connect up to the ACE train in Tracy. The cost of this project uh, in total is uh, $750 million without the transit. Um, but we think uh, that there are a lot of benefits if we could get this project constructed. For one, it would support local job growth. There, there are an awful lot of jobs out there in San Joaquin County that are kind of on the books in the general plans but really can't be realized because of the limitations of transportation and limitations of uh, goods movement. So this project would enhance goods movement and would uh, dramatically uh, increase the uh, speeds and save time actually for trips that are going from the Tracy area into the northern parts of Contra Costa. So instead of having to go everybody over the 580 Altamont Pass and 680 North, uh, vehicles could now go straight north up into the eastern parts of Contra Costa and further north. Um, there are a lot of uh, safety problems out there now. If you've been, I'm sure you've driven the two-lane roads and the uh, railroad over uh, the at-grade railroad crossings, and uh, this would eliminate uh, much of that by creating uh, separation of opposing traffic and at gr and uh, grade separations at the railroad crossings. The project would improve emergency access, uh, getting in and out of uh, Mountain House Knightson is an issue, especially in these flood-prone areas. Um, and the Tri-Link uh, could serve as an emergency evacuation route. And there's also savings of uh, VMT and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we estimate annual fuel savings of over 40 million gallons uh, if this project were to be constructed. Uh, so that's a quick, uh, a quick look at uh, our organization and the uh, 239 study. Um, uh, and uh, just also let you know we're going to be releasing our 2014 countywide transportation plan update uh, in July and I invite you all to participate in that and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Great presentation questions. Judge? Uh, that goes this next to 680, is that right? This, this last uh, thing you talked about, the, the highway from 580. The microphone. 580 to uh, north. That goes, that connects from 680? Uh, it would connect um, from 580, it would go north, north of the 205, 580 junction, straight north and it would connect to Highway 4 East, and then Highway 4 East, which is now being improved to, to eight lanes, uh, eventually connects to 680. Right. So yes, yeah, you could use it to this. get to Martinez. So you, you um, connect with, four would be, the, would be the connector between yeah. this highway and then the 680. Right. And what, what is the status of it? I mean, what is the real, realistic? Uh, well, it's really in the planning stages. Uh, we've, we've just completed a feasibility study we're going to do a PSR, uh, Caltrans style, uh, during 2014. In 2015, we're going to uh, start this, the uh, CEQA NEPA process. Um, and uh, probably uh, construction is at least 10 years out on this project. Is this a, a state, is this state and county variety of, of uh, Funding sources? Is it the, state? Uh, the, the sources uh, for the study are federal. This is a, a Pombo grant uh, from back uh, from the days of Ice T. Um, and um, there is no funding. The, the, the I'll call it a billion dollar project. There is no funding now for the billion dollar project. Um, SR 239 is a legislatively designated route, but it hasn't been adopted by CTC yet. Larry? I, but all three counties are self-help counties, so you could stick your fist into each one of their wallets to do that. 
That is correct. And we're also looking at uh, innovative funding methods and possibility of uh, creating a JPA and possibility of tolling. In the 1980s, the voters of Contra Costa adopted an urban limit line. Is this plan consistent with that? Uh, we uh, we do have an urban limit line, and it is in force. Um, and this plan respects the urban limit line in that there would be no access or egress from the facility within the uh, urban limit line. So essentially, it does cross it's, the a, line. it's a roadway without connections starting in Brentwood and ending over at 205. How, that's, that's how long, how many miles? That's correct. That's about 15 miles. There would be an interchange uh, once you crossed the 205, 580 inter interchange there and continued north on 239. Uh, the first interchange would be at the Byron Airport at Armstrong Road, which is One, about, I think, I, seven I just, or eight miles north. I, I just assume so. that uh, uh, the, the notion of the... Uh, 17 mile or whatever in the Dickens it is roadway uh, with no uh, connection ramps uh, has not let yet been legally tested as to its consistency. I assume you would have to acknowledge it's growth inducing at least at the two ends. That's the purpose, right? Well, we're um, we're trying not to use the word growth inducing when we talk about the project, but well, then it, what's it the does, purpose of it? It does enable. Uh, economic growth in that it would enable ah. job creation especially in the San Joaquin area and a, a rose by any other name yeah. is still a rose and we've uh, we've had some interesting comments we've actually done an extensive public outreach process up and down the corridor and and when we when we tell uh, the residents at Mountain House that the, that there will be no access they 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 really like the project but they really would like the access because they like to have another way to travel into the bay, into the bay area. San does, Francisco does the bay project area. have any uh, elements that give uh, legal assurances that in the future it will not be amended to add exchanges and so forth? Uh, well, I think that would be written into the uh, the plan for the roadway. That the that the right of way would be limited and that there would be no access. Irrevocably, for, com irrevocably committed. Uh, that's a good question. Whether it would be a irrevocable decision or not. Okay. Thank you. It's fascinating to me all the different aspects of trying to plan something like this. Um, the number of pages of the things that you have to consider when you're developing essentially a a, a, a new access point to a large metropolitan area. Uh, for Garth and Martin, um, it's been my observation that Highway 4 is not in very good shape, that uh, subsidence and undulation it, probably in some respects cr have created an unsafe situation out there. Martin, your project seems to um, provide an opportunity to um, effectively replace Highway 4 in, 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 in terms of people going from Stockton, I-5, to the, the East Bay. Um, is there any coordinated effort between Caltrans and Contra Costa County with an eye towards um, uh, viewing this as a replacement or um, a substitution for the need to spend lots of money on Highway 4 to upgrade that in the future? Well, we, we have uh, a, a number of committees overseeing this study, and in, one of them is a technical advisory committee, and we have representatives from District 4 and District 10 on that committee, and uh, we're in discussions with District 10 now uh, on the feasibility study. And uh, when we went out to the public and told them about this project, um, and when we went to the San Joaquin uh, COG, um, that was a question that came up very often. Why, why are you doing this and not Highway 4? Why don't you improve Route 4? And when we look at Route 4, it's, it's, it's a much stickier issue. It's, it's much more difficult to upgrade Highway 4 than it is to 
create this 239 corridor, we believe. Um, and also, the, the funding for the study was focused on this corridor, on this 239 corridor, and not on Highway 4 and not on Vasco Road. We also hear a lot of cries, why don't you improve Vasco Road? Uh, but the corridor is clearly defined in the legislative mandate. Garth, anything to add to that? No, I mean, he's, he's closer to the issue definitely than, than I am personally. But it's, it's a, planning, as you're full aware, is a very long, drawn-out process. And, and so, I, I mean, a lot of these issues, that you, it takes time to, 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 to flush things out and, and what is the best alternative. So I'm sure that all of those issues will be taken into consideration during the planning process. I'm just curious from the state's perspective, does this um, reduce the need to consider a major upgrade of Highway 4 in the next 30 years? Well, you know, potentially, yeah, you just have to see from a, you know, kind of a regional perspective what is the best uh, way to spend limited amounts of dollars that we have for transportation improvements. And so um, if, if this new route was to help, you know, reduce congestion or relieve, you know, uh, on Route 4, Maybe the improvements might not be necessary. I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's something, mm -hmm. like I say, will be discussed okay. most definitely during the planning process. Okay. Martin, thanks for the report, and uh, looks like we're on to Sam. Actually, I was hoping we could jump to Michael first um, to do the county level and then switch to... Um, Since he's, he's familiar with the Highway rocks. 4. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, yeah. On the other end, great, Michael. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry, 